CataractCoach.com. How to clean this scarred capsule. The patient had a long-standing, dense posterior subcapsular cataract, and he's left with this posterior capsule opacity. So I just want to show you that's how dense that nucleus is. It has moderate nuclear density, but there's a lot of posterior subcapsular change. And this is a long-standing cataract. So it's a little bit tough to even see our capsular excess. Maybe tripan blue dye would be helpful for some surgeons in this setting. We can also just adjust our microscope lighting. And we can try to get that rexus flipped over. Again, not the best visualization due to that posterior subcapsular opacity. Let's adjust the scope lighting. There we go. Just doing more of the coaxial illumination in order to see that rexus. Now, obviously, my view through the microscope is much better than this high-definition video. And so we're able to see it quite well. There you can see the edge of it. We end up with a beautiful capsulorexis. So that goes great. And this patient's had this posterior subcapsular cataract for a couple of years. And really, he put off having the surgery for quite a while. As a result, it really has a very dense PSC opacity. And there's certain spots of it that we saw preoperatively that we thought, and that's going to be tough to remove. And I'm going to show you that intraop. And you can decide, what should we do here? And so there are a lot of options. Now you see the black marks on the cornea, those are just extra marks to just mark the cardinal meridians to make sure. We've also marked the cornea, which you won't see now, but you'll see at the end, to line up a torque lens. This patient's getting a torque lens. Two diopters of corneal astigmatism, very important that we get this torque lens in the capsule bag. So here's the phaco probe. We'll only show you the beginning of it, just to show you the, the first chop, so you can see the density of the nucleus isn't too bad. So here's the initial chop. Probe in, chopper in, let's do a combo chop, and yeah, that's tolerable. It's a moderate degree of nuclear density. It's mostly posterior subcapsular. So let's fast forward here at the end. Here is the cortex removal. Boom. Now we can remove the cortex. You see, we did end up with a beautiful capsulorexis. That looks great. And you can already see there's going to be an opacity here on that posterior cap. It's going to be tough to remove. Now we can certainly try to remove it, and I, I promise I will try. There are techniques you can use. So using that phaco tip to rub on the capsule a little bit. Some people even use um, phaco tips that have a diamond finish on them or to help scrape the posterior capsule a little bit. But just do keep in mind, you don't want to do any damage because that capsule is thin, right? The posterior capsule is thinnest as four microns. Just think about it. That's half of a red cell diameter. That's tiny. So I'll clean up the capsule bag here. I'm doing a little polishing here on the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. I really want to get this nice and clean. I'm using the polymer tip on the eye probe. You can see that white tip. So I'm trying to go there and vacuum it. Now you can use a polish mode on your machine. You can use the regular vacuum mode and titrate the degree of vacuum or suction with your foot pedal, which is my preferred technique. And sometimes you can get an edge of this and scrape it off. And I'll try, but I don't know if I'll be successful. You can also try again once the IO well is placed in the eye. So we don't want to damage it now. And remember, the patient has to get this torque lens. It's two and a half or two diopters of corneal astigmatism. I need to have that torque lens placed. So let's fill the capsule bag. There you see the opacity. It's just to the side of the visual axis. You can see the Purkinje images are slightly away from that. So it's not directly in the visual axis just yet. Let's get the lens in the eye. Again, here's our single piece acrylic lens. It's a torque lens. And if you look carefully, the main phaco incision is made on the steep axis. And this is a T5 torque lens. We'll place that in the capsule bag. And you can see the torque markings on the eye well. And there are, there are markings on the cornea, which we'll use to line up the lens. But I've made the phaco incision. You can see the marks on the cornea right on the phaco incision. The phaco incision is exactly on the steep axis, which is probably about 30 degrees or so. So let's get that lens in good position here. I'm just using BSS on a cannula just to see if I can go underneath here and pull out any little strands of cortex that may be remaining. Really want to clean this up nicely. There's a little bit more. Hey, look what we found. There we go. Just pull that. We can leave that in the center, and we can aspirate that out using the IA probe. So I obviously don't want to leave that in the caps or bag. That's going to cause a lot of inflammation post-op, and so we'll remove all of that. Now you can go remove viscoelastic. Obviously, with the torque lens, we have to get behind the optic, remove all that viscoelastic. I want the posterior capsule to be in direct contact with the posterior aspect of the optic, and the lens will stay in good position. I will guarantee you this torque lens will not malrotate or misrotate. So removing all our viscoelastic, there you can see the rex size looks ideal. We're going to dial this lens over a little bit. And you know what? I've made the decision that we have a YAG laser in the clinic. So it's very easy for us 
to wait a month or so and do a YAG laser capsulotomy. I'd tell you to wait about a month would be sufficient because then you'll have complete contraction of the capsular bag and you can do a conservative YAG laser capsulotomy. Got a good section on cataract coach on how to do that. Just search the keyword YAG or capsulotomy. It'll come up. So finishing up our case, that looks great. This patient's going to be very happy. So in post-op day one, I can already tell you the patient was thrilled. And then a month after, we're going to do that YAG laser for him. That's my approach for this case. Now, is there an alternative? In fact, there is. And for that, let's show you the next video clip. This is my good friend, Dr. Val Apostolov from Amsterdam. He's going to do a posterior capsulorexis. And so notice he's doing it already with the IOL in the capsular bag, lifting up the IOL more, making room, injecting some viscoelastic underneath it. So he's going to create a posterior capsulorexis. Now you can do it for a scarred posterior capsule like you saw in my case. You can also do it for a case like this. Let's say the patient has issues and can't come back for a future YAG laser capsulotomy. I mean, truth be told, a large percent of our patients, in fact, the majority of our cataract patients, more than half for sure, are going to have a YAG laser capsulotomy in five or 10 years at the latest. It's a common thing. So he's gonna go underneath that and let's watch the technique. This is a posterior capsulorexis. And the nice part here is he's doing it after IOL implantation. So it's very easy just to push the IOL back into position. So he's gonna poke him with his forceps. Now the technique here is very similar. In fact, it's a lot easier sometimes to create this because Instead of the anterior capsule wanting to run downhill, remember the anterior capsule is like a dome. It wants to run outwards towards the, the periphery. This posterior capsule rexus wants to stay inward because you're operating on that bowl shape. And so he's bringing it around here, creating a nice rexus. Now, one technique that I like that he's not using here is if I make a small hole opening in the posterior capsule to inject a little viscoelastic in that subhyloid space or antihyloid space just to create a little bit of a barrier function there. And that I find helps a lot. So here he's creating that round capsulorexis in the posterior capsule, and he does a beautiful job here. Now remember, Val is a very, very talented surgeon. He is a master surgeon with a tremendous amount of experience. And so this is not something I recommend for the average surgeon to try, certainly not if you're at the beginning of your learning curve here. But there he's created a successful posterior capsulorexis. And now what? Now the question is, we can put the lens back in a position, that's easy. Do you remove the viscoelastic from behind the lens optic? Or will that stir up too much? Will the vitreous come forward? Will you break the anterior hyaloid face? And so you've got to think about that. So now you can rotate the lens in whatever position he wants to get best coverage. You definitely want to have that covered up. And my advice is do not go behind the eye wall to remove the viscoelastic. You can just remove the viscoelastic using a bimanual technique here from the anterior chamber and be very cautious about going behind the lens. So here, watch this technique. Here's a bimanual IA, so infusion going in the right hand. The left hand is the aspiration. And he's going to go and very carefully remove viscoelastic. Again, keep your settings here. High infusion pressure or high bottle height and lower flow. The vacuum is not as critical, but the flow. So I'd say a high bottle height, or at least 100 centimeters, so at least 80 millimeters of mercury of pressure or 60 millimeters of mercury of pressure on the low end, and then lower your flow rate to about 20, maybe 25 cc's a minute. And you can see you can very successfully do that, keeping the eye in good position, and do not worry about going behind that lens. And that's a beautiful outcome. So thank you, Val, for sharing that. Always love watching your videos. So my advice, do it the way I showed you. Do the YAG laser capsulotomy after about a month. Thanks for watching. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself what's the name of those forceps.